All right, welcome back. Live from the Schaefer Center on the campus of Southwestern Assemblies of God University. We have part two of this great doubleheader. Your Lions are hosting Southwestern Christian University of Bethany, Oklahoma. We call them the Eagles. And uh, what a fantastic part one. The Lady Lions move into a lock in the conference for fourth place. And that is where every team uh, really desires to be in that top four. And so with a loss to University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma and a win for the Lady Lions, they are dead locked. And that is going to make that game, which is coming up soon on the schedule, even more uh, valuable um, and more entertaining to uh, watch because there's so much on the line and the Lady Lions just are putting it all together on a three game winning streak. And if you missed that, uh, it's worth the watch. It's beautiful basketball. Coach Suns has the Lady Lions tuned up and they are executing at a high level and uh, it is a lot of fun to watch. But this game is uh, on paper, well, 
you probably wouldn't say, oh, well, this is the game I want to tune in to watch. But I can tell you, Southwestern Christian University, they have not won a game this year. That's tough. And I don't think that is indicative of how good this team is. I think that is kind of an anomaly. And uh, they are on the cusp. They, all the games are fairly close. And um, they are capable of putting a loss on you, especially if you take them lightly. I know we say that all the time. And uh, it is. It is one of those uh, little bait and trap type of games where you go, oh, we're playing a, a, a team that hasn't managed to win a game yet. Well, do you really want to be the first loss on an 0-12 team? Well, those things happen if that's the way you think. And uh, if you think, well, they're just, um, they're going to be an, uh, another win and uh, you start uh, letting your mind wander on, oh, well, how many am I going to score? Are we going to run up the score? Those kind of things. Uh, is there a potential for that to happen? Maybe, but you have to come out and execute and play your best basketball. And I guarantee the Lions are going to have to play their best basketball today to get out of here with a win. And uh, that, that kind of sounds uh, counterintuitive to what you see on the stat sheet, but... Um, this is Sooner Athletic Conference, and the worst teams in the conference are really not that bad. And if they played in a different conference, those wins and loss columns would look a lot different. And the Champion Sports Network uh, uh, positioning poll for conferences came out this week. And uh, we see um, out of 21 available conferences, uh, the Sooner Athletic Conference is ranked number seven out of 21. So they're in the top third of all the conferences in the NAI. And very tough. Very, very tough statistically. And uh, um, day in and day out you cannot afford to take any game lightly. And especially um, coming off of a loss on Thursday. You got to rebound. And uh, going to have to let that loss go to Mac U. And, and not think about all the things you did wrong, but capitalize on all the things that you did right and just bring all that to the table. So right now, um, a little, what, what in golf they call it a bounce back birdie. The Lions need a bounce back birdie today. They took a loss up in, uh, at Mac U and they got to get a, get a win started and start the winning streak here in the Schaefer Center. All right, we're going to throw you down live to courtside for the opening prayer, national anthem, and the starting lineups. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. And no matter what the result is, whether win or lose, we give you all the glory because in your name we play and pray. Amen. Patterson. 
At guard, 6'3", senior, number 10, Jason Douglas Stanley. At forward, 6'5", senior, number 30, Robert Chapman. And at forward, 6'9", freshman, number 33, Michael Woodridge. Head coach for the Eagles, Quinn Woodridge. And now, the starting line is for your Sagu Lions. At guard, 5'9", junior, number one, Alaric Hall. At guard, 6'2", junior, number two, CJ Hall. At guard, 5'10", grad student, number three, Noah Bowling. At forward, 6'6", six, six, sophomore, number five, JJ Bowling. And at forward, 6'10", grad student, number 21, Kylan Owens. The head coach for the Lions is Delton Dill. Assistant coaches are Emmanuel Odoi, James Sutherland, Mitch McMullen, and Darian Davis. Grad assistant coach is Logan Edwards. All right, the pregame festivities are over, and in the books, the starting lineups have been made. And this part two of the doubleheader between the men's teams of Sagu and Southwestern Christian University are about to tip off, but I am very excited. Earlier, uh, you heard the voice of head coach of the men's team, Delton Dill, during the women's basketball. But now we get to change it up and hear from head coach Michael Sons of the women's team. And we got a lot to talk about, coach, but uh, that was a the, an early unforced turnover by Southwestern Christian and uh, indicative maybe of things that come from an 0-12 team. But uh, I'm sure they're going to get it uh, corrected early on. Go ahead and get that one turnover out, out of the way, right? Always feels good to start off with a stop. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, nice push. Very fast pace uh, run there from the Eagles. A little dribble drive to the foul line, gets a shot off. They get a second chance look. Throw it out to the corner, and that's an early three-point shot for the Eagles. They have the lead. Good ball movement from the Lions. Working around. Fourth touch. And uh, back in the old days when we played, we, we, when we were not in a fast break, our first half uh, um, offensive, half-court offensive set, our coach used to make us minimum five touch. Minimum five touch. Just, just to kind of get it uh, in your head, we're here to play basketball and, and fundamental basketball. Yeah, and don't really take it easy on the defense. Yeah. yeah Quick yeah. shot gets them back on offense. So exactly. Make them work a little bit. Rebound from the Lions. They come back down. It is a tie ball game now. Three-point shot converted. Uh, last possession. Dumped down to the elbow where J.J. Bowling was. J.J. Bowling gets it out to Alaric Hall on the, on the wing. And a little late whistle, but uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but ref says Alaric stepped on the line. You can't see it from that angle, but he did look like he was dangerously close. Yeah, definitely. He was either on it or hovering over it. Eagles trying to get a half court set up with a very high post pick. That's short. Good rebound from J.J. Bowling. He gets it out to Hall. And they're in the quick tempo. And J.J. Bowling gets a three. Definitely, you want to start fast. Anytime a team might be, maybe they're not getting as many wins as they wanted to and they're down in the standings, uh, they're playing free. And you, you want to start quick 
and and take care of business early if you can. The longer they stick around, the more dangerous it gets. A no, no true words, and, and, and that is coach speak. Uh, it's not just paranoia. It, it is just the reality. It's the way the game works. The big man. Have ball will shoot down there, and I think that's a good shot for him, just in and out. But uh, I think you'll see Michael Woolridge post that up uh, just a little more. It's a good-looking mechanics. I, I just think it's just slightly off. Go to go to that well, dig in that well a little bit, and see uh, if you can get some water out of it. That's a really good shot. I live with that all day. Yeah, absolutely. Dangerously close to the baseline, but sliced it up. What a great drive and uh, finish there. That one's off by C.J. Hall. A good rebound by Robert Chapman. John, have you ever called a game with the fire alarm going off in the background? Uh, we have not, and I have, uh, I don't know if our audience turnover has, has uh, uh, happened, but I would imagine by now uh, quite a few of our viewers don't know what you're talking about. So uh, I was waiting. That was going to be uh, our talking fodder for the first uh, timeout or you. significant dead ball. So we, we will definitely get into that, and I do want to collect your thoughts on gameplay from that fantastic win over uh, at, at the time when you started the game. Southwestern Christian was one game behind you, now you increase that gap. Huge win. Yeah, that is a huge, huge win. Larry Hall quickly getting the ball down, but throws it directly in the hands of the defense. Now Noah Bowling playing hurt today. He got a triple wrap on that ankle in which he turned over. And uh, in, at Mac U. Oh, that is a great shot. And that's going to get a quick timeout from Coach Delton Dill. And man, what a great shot from Robert Chapman. He already has five, no, six. I'm sorry, he's got two threes. And uh, he is just the fourth leading scorer. Coming in at eight points a game. So he's almost got his average. All right. So let's talk a little bit. Man, no, I've never, 16 years, never seen a game disrupted by a fire alarm. And uh, if you did not see it, uh, in the third quarter of the women's game, fire alarms just spontaneously combusted and started going off. Well, uh, it, it appeared that some someone had... The master sensor got locked out and no password would work. They could not, they identified no actual harm or danger in the building, but um, uh, so no need for the fire department to get here, but they couldn't get the, the in excruciatingly loud uh, uh, sirens to go off in the gym and uh, the rest of the building for that fact. And, um, and, so they just determined, I guess coaches got together, refs got together, said, hey, can we play this game? Y'all said, yeah, we got we to gotta play the game. So you play the game with the siren, with the alarms going off. And I made mention of it during the, the game. I got what incredible willpower and focus between these two teams and even the referees to just keep this game going like uh, another day in the office. I, how did it feel down there on the, on the bench? Well, it was uh, – so the, the break was what I was concerned about. Okay. And uh, we, they let us warm up a little bit. But I, I ultimately kind of deferred to the other team's coach. I, I, I wanted, you know, to make sure they made the call. So yeah. we went with it. The refs said they could handle it. And we just used it with the girls. We used it as a, hey, if we want to be a team that is a contender, we have to pass these kind of tests. Yeah. We've had a break here. Let's oh, that's see, good. See if we can uh, finish this thing under weird circumstances that are out of our control. So 
Yeah. We just turned it for positive. That that well, that's what makes you an amazing coach. But uh, uh, the 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 awareness and sense to be able to help um, these young ladies uh, identify and understand the moment, and uh, that that's you know those are you're right those are the uh, um, the outcomes that uh, you have to have to be a winning program to to achieve at the next level and you guys passed the test hey and today you got the we win. did today you did we and, will take it and well that's in the books that's in the history books that's something that can be leaned on sagu just going on a little bit of a run after uh southwestern christian university put on a three-point clinic and and a quick run uh, Saigu responding with three quick buckets, two-point buckets, uh, some great passing and running of the floor, and got their tempo back to where they wanted it to be. Still down two, so the Eagles are, are playing great. But uh, now Coach Woolridge, um, he's, he's, he says he needed a timeout. And uh, so two pretty quick timeouts after significant runs. And, well, uh, if you think about it, these guys were thrown out of their routine as well. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, we noticed they got uh, – they, they were – so the gym is in – if you don't know, um, the gym is a part of a much larger footprint in a building, and, and those alarms were going off in the locker rooms, and it was extremely loud. So they went into the lobby of the main building and just had their team meeting out in the open, and you could hear them getting ready, and yeah, it threw them totally off, uh, out of sync, but looks like it's kind of a good thing for them. Good start. It's a good start. Great ball movement right there, and that was a... a oh, wow. Let's, oh, not on the ball. That was sneaky. Because I was looking at the ball, but that was not on the ball. And uh, that was called against Sean Hopkins um, off the ball with a push. And basically took away a foul that would have been called on the shooter. Nice movement from the Lions. Got the corner. Oh, that was all the way down. C.J. Hall. Asking someone to call 911 for him because he got robbed. <laughs> oh, Hopkins. Nope. And easy rebound for J.J. Bowling. From the top of the key, that's bingo from Alaric Hall, who has actually been shooting just very well from long range this year and has really worked hard on that part of his game. He's having a great season. And his thing, his thing is defense. Yeah, his, no, that is definitely his specialty, and his, his specialty is speed. And he translates that into defense that seems he stops everything. And now he's learned how to transition that into great offense. Hopkins had a great layup there. So, here comes the Eagles. They broke it, break it down into a half court setup. Now, trying to look to go down low, nothing there. The two three zone look from Coach. Delton Dill, you don't see it too much with this team. And maybe the Eagles feel like that is a good recipe for them to score. Looks like it so far. Oh, great cut. C.J. Hall knowing what to do when the ball is not in his hand, keeping the movement going. And good things happen when you move as a basketball player. When you don't have the ball and you just continue to move around, um, you're going to get open and wide open layup for C.J. Hall there. 
And Hopkins scores again. He's having a good first half here. This is a nice finish. I don't think they have this, the scoring right because he that's his third bucket. And they only have him at two right now. No, well, they've changed it. They're, they're one behind. He's got four. What, what are your thoughts, man or zone? What do you like? Uh, I, man, as a, um, okay. So from a, a strategist perspective, I'm whatever the scenario calls for. I like teams that can, that are willing to run them both. Yes. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a big uh, proponent of the Bobby Knight philosophy that if you if you can't beat beat them with man to man, then you don't deserve to win. I think the game of basketball is uh, is a great strategy game. Oh my goodness, JJ Bowling swats that one, keeps it in bounds. Good hustle by the Eagles to knock that off of Trace Bowling. Um, but then you have the Jim Beheims who... Yep, that uh, two, have three. mastered the understanding of how um, the... Uh, and, and I would say Jerry Tarka may be the architect of how a zone works. And you, when you implement your zone, it looks a lot like that uh, Tarkanian Beheim kind of uh, perspective where... You, you have to really study it because sometimes it looks like it might be a man-to-man. -man, and that's high-level zone. Um, so I like to see both. I like coaches that can throw, it, throw them both at you. Um, but as a, as a player, um, I really enjoyed playing man-to-man. -man. And uh, it just kind of, I felt like, Kept me in sync, yeah. um, connect more connected to the game, but uh, because you got to that like the zone is so um, uh, as a player uh, uh, to uh, translation to uh, the viewer the the audience, um, it, it's so elusive. Mm -hmm. Zone can you you think well that represents weakness. Right. And I think a lot of the old school coaches used to portray that and you really double down on, oh, you're weak if you play zone. It's more, it, it's complicated, man. Yeah. I mean, if you do it right. Well, like, I mean, zones can get beat and they can get busted wide open, but you're not doing it right if right. that's happening. And you need to play. If you can't play the zone correctly, then you got to play, uh, got to play man. Well, you think about your opponent, too. They, they have a lot of man to man plays. Yeah. They got a lot. Most. But there's not very many zone plays. Yeah. And, and and I don't know. I just think sometimes having it as a change up, it's a really good Yeah, philosophy. makes you think. Makes you think. And a lot of times you see offensive uh, teams just respond almost in a, I don't want to say fully street ball way, but it's, it's just like, oh, well, we got an open shot. We, we can shoot long range or whatever, which decreases the, the – uh, shooting percentage um oh nice shot by cj hall and now it looks like the lions are kind of hitting their stride and getting into this this game with some confidence um but 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 as an offense you're right there's not a, it's just swinging around the horn and find an open guy right and then hopefully you get a cutter that can find an open alley a little lane in and maybe get a layup out of it if it's bad zone offense. But uh, it, you force this, like you said, you force the offense into, oh, wait, wait what, what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, wait, oh, I was just shoot. And then, you know, it, the accuracy goes down, on, at least statistically. Well, then you have Dell Brown. I don't know if you remember him back at LSU. But oh, of course. He had a defense where if, if you threw it to the right, we were in zone. If you threw it to the left, we were in man. And, you know, he just tried Interesting. to. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, what a switch up. You would have to practice that a lot. A lot. <laughs> wow. I, yeah, you're, you're, the basketball IQ of your players has to be above average to be able to, to uh, get that. Uh, and it, and the amoeba, the amoeba D, because you, you got to understand how switching works and, and at a really high level, um, and and actually uh, player manipulation, you know, um, making 
that offensive player do what you want them to do, uh, forcing them inside, outside. So there's a, it's, it's just big thought. It's a, you know, zone can be really big thought. So I don't buy into, although I'm not uh, dissing on Bobby Knight. He's man, one of the, the greatest ever. That, that's not my intention, but um, he was a firm believer. You, you shouldn't be allowed to play basketball unless you are going to play it man to man. The Eagles trying to stop some of the momentum that the Lions have produced here. I like this idea. Oh, that is very nice. Got big man on big man. And Woolridge, he's got some skills. Good footwork right there. Dylan Pitt in the game number 14 with the ball. Nice ball movement. Oh, look at quick decisions where to go. Yonker goes down. Maybe got himself in jail there because uh, when you get the ball, you're a big man down there, you've got to commit and just go. You can't be thinking about it, and you've got to go through the contact. He thought about it for about a half a second, and that gives – uh, a defender enough time to react and and create that double team where now you start to panic and he made an errant pass. There you go. Commit to the shot and go with it and just live with it. The post up game is it's kind of gone away. I I like this. Don't yeah. see it very much. Well, you know, talking with uh, Coach Dill this year, he really has committed this team to going inside out much more than in the past. And uh, I, I kind of agree with him. I feel like it's just given a, a little more security uh, for the offense to hang on. They know inside, and then we can get it out, get some success inside. So you get your best look. The three-point percentage goes up when it's a pass from inside. Yeah, and, 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 and tell everybody why. There's a logical uh, fact about why that happens. Well, one of the reasons is the gun shooting machine. Everybody's in the gym shooting on the gun. Where's that well, ball coming as far from? As, the, as far as the player, for sure. I mean, the, these guys have extended range so much. But I'm saying strategically, you go down low, and then the, the natural. Defense goes with you. Exactly. <laughs> and so these guys are getting, like you said, they're, they're practicing with the gun. They're not practicing with defense. Well, if you can get the defense out of your face, it feels like practice, and you, you just perform well. And you're already squared up. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, you're ready to go. Takes that little um, split-second decision-making when someone's in your face, do I take it? It takes that out of play, and now you just you commit. And whenever you commit, the confidence just kind of makes the ball go in. Pitt, long-range bomber. He's had great success early on. This is just his sixth game with the team. He was on fire at Oklahoma Panhandle. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I didn't get to see that game, but uh, he he had 24 points in 24 minutes, I think, played. That's, that's incredible. High rate of scoring. Yep, that bounced on the line. That's going to be Eagles ball. Lions have a six-point lead. It's 30 to 24 with just under five minutes left in the first half. Here comes Hall. Trace Bowling with the long range, and he's very good from that distance, increasing this lead to nine. Yonker from long distance, he gets his to go, and that's a big man that can shoot. 
And we have two bigs that can really fire it up from long range in Cortland Blake and Noah Yonker. Pitt with the rebound. And I would, I would hate running. To, I would hate to have to game plan for this team. They <laughs> yeah, got shooters true. everywhere. Oh, nice dish. Yonker was ready. And that's a great assist from Alaric Hall. Coming up to the three minute mark on the clock. And that was a nice three by the Eagles. Trying to keep this decently close. It's a four possession game right now. Oh, J.J. Bullock threw it right into the defense. And it was kicked out of bounds. So it'll be Lions ball. Trace Bowling to throw it in, gets it to Yonker, to Hall. Hall penetrates, Bowling to Trace Bowling. Wide open shot from Dylan Pitt, and that, that was confident. It was. Those are tough. When yeah. You, when you're standing there by yourself, that's kind of tough. Yeah. Well, shooters love it, you know. So there are five separate players for the Lions that have uh, made their three-point shot. Three of those five players are the bowling family. Oh, that's a nice, juicy three falling out of bounds from the corner. They needed that one. Like we always say, stay close. Get to the second half. Good defense by the Eagles. Still 11 point lead for the Lions and the Eagles trying to cut into that double digit lead. Oh, Woolridge, I like that. Went in really strong, created a little space. I think his, it, he got a little awkward, so his upper body had turned in, but his feet didn't follow. And when he left the ground, he was not square at all. And uh, it was just a little long. Living up to the name, Orlando Wolverine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> me and you, man. We, you're going to get me off track here. <laughs> oh, Noah Yaka with the putback. Stayed home, got the extra touch. And... Yonker with a quick nine points. Now under a minute left, bounces around J.J. Bowling. A lot of swing. Pitt got a little undecided. Now he's wide open and mechanics look great, just a little long. Too close for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a long distance shooter. Yep, that's going to be a blocking foul on Yonker. And uh, so, Coach, talk to us a little bit about how um, in your game planning for uh, the Eagles and, uh, and if you're just tuning in, the uh, Lady Lions came out with a fantastic victory over Southwestern Christian University in the, the first part of this doubleheader. And we have uh, head coach Michael Sons here with us um, to talk a, a little bit about that game. Your game plan, did it, did it match up? Were they who you thought they were? And um, was it just a matter of you guys executed the game plan or did something different out of the ordinary happen? What was your view of the game? Well, the game plan, it did kind of live to, true to form, but the good, the good thing about our girls is they've seen a lot. They, they're, they're getting older now, and, and you're not going to surprise them with anything. So they're really good at adapting. Southwestern has an awesome player, MJ Case. 
And I mean, we were on her. She's just making yep. shots. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I noticed that in the second half, or uh, you guys do quarters, so in the third quarter, it looked like there was uh, this strategy coming out of the um, uh, the locker room that uh, you were going to go a little more at her on defense. And you yeah. put uh, uh, Neely Tilly Bedick on her, and she just really isolated, shut down um, MJ in the third quarter. I, if you look at the stats, she she was um, uh, ineffective. They, you, you guys got her out of her game. And uh, we were saying uh, in the broadcast, uh, Coach Dill and I, is just if you could just hold her to her 17 a game, then uh, you've done your job. And just just let her get what she gets, and then do every take everybody else out. But uh, I think in third quarter, I mean, you just took her totally out of the game, which affected the fourth quarter, and she was a little more effective, but not really. And I think she ended up she was on pace to almost double her average from the first half and y'all just really clamped down and speaking of the great neely tilly Bedick, who did that work she is here on a microphone hi oh in, in the crowd oh, oh cute <laughs> that was great they they expected uh, they they know you're up here and what a what a great game how are you doing I'm good. How are you? All right, let's get your. I'm gonna get your mic on. Um, yeah, we might have to switch real quick, Coach. All right, we're switching it up. We want to hear from Neely real quick. Better? Oh yeah. Can you hear yourself? Yes, I can. Uh, oh, awesome! It's so good to have you up here. Thank um, you for taking the time. Thank you for having me. And uh, and maybe overcoming some of the stage fright that <laughs> comes along with being live and the millions of people that are watching. Oh, right so many. <laughs> well, uh, but everybody, they, they really like to get to know the players. And uh, you're one of the big personalities on the team. And not just off the court, but on the court. You are what we call the fighter. And um, coach gives you an assignment, and you just go all out on that assignment. And we saw what you did um, in the third quarter. You locked down MJ Case, who could arguably be one of the top three players. I in agree. The she definitely killed it today. Um, but I, defense is probably the most things I lock like lock in on. Yep. And yeah, well, you know, it's funny because uh, we say that and we probably don't talk about it on air enough about, uh, we talk a Larry Hall on the guys, you know, mm -hmm. he is the defensive specialist. But uh, when Coach Suns really wants to lock down a good player, we always notice that he calls your number and, and gets you. But you like to shoot the ball as yes, well. Yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> I do. So, so before you get uh, in the game when you're thinking mentally preparing mm -hmm. for the game do you have a number that you want to not not necessarily points uh, per se but do you have a number of uh, three point shots you imagine or do you just take whatever you get I take whatever I get and there's never really like a certain average ever okay of shots mm -hmm. you have to take but it's funny how I mean everybody knows you can shoot in the conference, and you were lights out. Uh, what was it? Was it Mackey or Oklahoma? Yes, sir, Mackey. Uh, it was Mackey. Mm -hmm. Did miss, and um, um, and and so it's not like it's some great secret, but mm -hmm. you are shifty. You get wide open, and uh, do you just feel I got the space? I'm going to take the shot. Yes, for sure. Um, Is that does that happen in practice a lot? I mean. <laughs> yes and no. Usually I'll, like, even if there's a defender there, I mean, I'll shoot it anyways in practice, but that's why, like, we practice about it. Of and then um, in game. The coach is over there. He's, he's, <laughs> uh, he's yelling at you because they call it sevens, right? Yes, and yes. Well, what does a seven mean? Um, the bet, like, the most comfortable you can be while shooting a shot. Yeah, and so it's the that's perfect what we, number and you're looking for the perfect yes, shot, right? Mm -hmm. So not getting outside of yourself and just shooting I any shot. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know better than that, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's the way you guys practice. Yes. But um, uh, you're what when you when you see do you know bef when you're in that spot and you're open are you calling for the ball or do you just wait for it to, to get there? Do you know when you got a seven on uh, coming your way? 
Yes. Is that usually, how you process it? usually, especially when they go and help, I'll call for it. But majority of the time, I really focus more on my team. Mm -hmm. Like I can't really do anything without my team. Uh -huh. So I just wait for that perfect opportunity. And if uh I don't, I'll. Okay, so uh, you know the facts don't the, the stat sheets don't lie to mm -hmm. us. Uh, I mean they don't tell all the story, mm -hmm. but uh, m maybe a little colder than usual today. Yes, yeah? and that I mean it, it happens. happens. Yeah, Just it happens. happens. Every shooter has a cold day, and uh, but it didn't didn't really get you out of your game. I mean you kept shooting mm -hmm. and doing what you know to do, but it looked like it helped you. And I don't know. I'm just mm -hmm. assuming. Mm -hmm. You tell us the story. Mm -hmm. Looked like it helped you kick in another gear on defense. Yes, sir. That's exactly what it did. I knew I wasn't going to hit as much today, so I was still going to obviously shoot, but I was focusing more on locking down on um, number three. That's what makes great players, by the way. And I'm just Thank telling you, you from um, uh, experience. And that is the maturity that we've seen in you from day one to now. And now we could call you a veteran. What year are you? Uh, year three. So you're, junior. you're a junior, mm -hmm. and you got another good solid. You got the rest of this year and mm -hmm. another good solid mm -hmm. year. You're officially a veteran. Did you know that? No, I didn't. That's the way it works. Yeah. Wow. So you're a leader, and um, uh, my and body does feel kind of old. <laughs> and who you tell it? Uh, and, but I'm actually old, so uh, you, you know I, I understand that as a player. You know, going through the season does beat you up. Mm -hmm. You guys, I watch you in practice. Y'all beat up on each other. <laughs> And, uh, Nicely. I, well, yeah, of course. Yes. I mean, of, no one thinks your your guys are mm -hmm. monsters. They they, they get it. They, mm -hmm. But the more intense the practice is, the mm -hmm. better the outcome usually of in the, the game. games. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that from from your first yes. second year to this year? I I've noticed a lot of um, like intensity in practice, like more effort being applied in practice because practice obviously makes perfect, and then. Noticing that this year, especially, we've exchanged it from practice to the game now. Because mm -hmm. even last year, we had amazing practices. Yep. But then sometimes it would fall short from a game. Mm -hmm. So what is the – can you – I, I haven't asked her. I didn't tell her any question we were going to to ask. Guys, so she's having to come up with these answers just right off. <laughs> and, and she's never been on the mic lives. But uh, um, talk to us a little bit about uh, – um, what is the difference? You, you kind of said, well, last year we still had good practices. What's the big uh, difference that you sense in practice and how it applies to the game? Kind of like you said earlier, um, we really grew over the, like, over the summer and like coming from now. I just feel like we have like our knowledge has gotten stronger. Uh, like our basketball IQ has gotten higher and uh, we've improved in like things that we lacked last year coming into this year. And then... Um, is that because uh, you feel like um, the you guys understand what Coach Suns is putting in front of you as a as when it comes to plays, how mm -hmm. the defensive strategy? It just yes. looks beautiful out there. You guys, I maybe it's a chemistry thing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it feels like there's a lot of chemistry. Can you? Is, is that true? Yes. Uh, the, um, the half the half the team has been from like freshman year to now. Okay. So we've played with each but other for three years now. But you guys have lost now. quite a few players that started out with you. Yes. Right? Unfortunately, but um, I think we still like build off of that chemistry though. Yeah. Like, re like, um, what's the word? Giving the, like the relationship that uh, you you've built off the court. Mm -hmm is now really contributing on the court mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. And and I think that is like uh, one of the main ingredients for a team that has chemistry. But it it, it to, to the natural eye, when we see you guys down there playing, it just looks like there's a high level of trust. Yes, we're family down there. Yeah. Especially when we get on the floor. That is a hard thing to get on the floor mm -hmm. and, and can just maintain family because the pressure's high. Mm -hmm. and Especially when the fire alarms go off. Oh, man. <laughs> and, and I did talk a little bit about that. <coughs> I, and I would assume the viewer, that we look at that and go, how are you guys doing that? They, did you eventually just tune it out? Or? Oh, yes. I didn't even realize they went off. Oh, wow. I don't think any of us on the team realized that the alarm had gone off at the end of the third quarter. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that, that's interesting because you basically had to play pretty much the rest of the game with these fire alarms <laughs> just jamming. Yes. I mean, it was so loud. Mm -hmm. and um, We even and made sure our bench was 
even louder than the fire alarms yeah, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, uh, the 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 correct response is to overcome, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys really did overcome. Didn't let the uh, the layoff because there was about 20 minutes of mm -hmm. just nothing True. that went on, and uh, it didn't look like. You guys missed a step at all, so um, I commend you on your focus because it takes a lot of focus to play the game of basketball well. Yes. And uh, so you guys feel like you got a chance to uh, maybe um, do something special in the uh, postseason, like uh, these tournaments that will come up? Do you, Absolutely. Do you, are y'all believing? Mm -hmm. Is that Absolutely. the lo locker room attitude? You believe you can win this thing? Yes, we know we can win. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You heard it right there from one of the, the, the great leaders and veterans of this uh, Lady Lions basketball team. It's Neely Tilly Bedick. And uh, it, it, she's... She's really good on the court, guys, but she's <laughs> a you. much better person off the court, and uh, that's saying a lot. That would be hard to do because you're really good on the court, <laughs> and um, if you get a chance to say hi, uh, hug a neck, you know, you guys are always available after the game. Just tell her what a good job she's doing <laughs> and, uh, and encourage these ladies because I – believe i think everybody else is believing because you guys believe mm -hmm. and i you know i'm i, I you know commentator curse i don't want to yeah. jinx it but i really believe you guys can win this thing oh thank you so much I and that's really all we need that. is the support yep. and then our yep. team yeah we we do believe and it's exciting you guys are getting a lot of people to come to your games mm -hmm. it gets loud in there this is a lot of fun mm -hmm. I, i'll tell you i've i've watched sagu women's basketball for 16 years this is mm -hmm. the best team I've seen. That's and thank it's not you. just talent. It's mm -hmm. just the attitude, you guys, on and off the court. It, everyone's so approachable mm -hmm. and, and it's just a lot of fun. We see you guys hanging out and you're open to everyone. And mm -hmm. that, that is just neat. It thank you really, so much. Really, yeah, absolutely. That's Neely Tilly Bedick. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking the time, Neely, to of come course. and uh, hang out with us and, and, and just get on the mic. I know that's, <laughs> that's a big thing. It was a little nerve wracking, but I think I was pretty good. <laughs> you, are, you are awesome. You did great. Thank Thank you All so right, much. Neely. Have a great rest of your day. You too. All right, guys. We're going to kick it to a, a quick commercial. We'll be back in about two minutes with the next half of this great second part of the doubleheader, the men's basketball team. They got a 13-point lead over Southwestern Christian University. We'll be back. You're watching the Sagu Sports Network. When I was looking for a college to attend, I didn't just want an education. I wanted an experience. When I found SAGU, I knew I'd found a university that thrives on strong faith and solid friendships. I feel at home in my classes. I can interact with my professors and classmates because instruction is personalized. With a diverse student body, I have plenty of chances to be myself while growing with amazing people at the same time. If you're looking for much more than a college education, SAGU is for you. Your power is unstoppable. And with us cheering you on, there's no limit to where it can take you. Baylor Scott and White Health, the power to live better.
All right, we're back. Second half action about to get underway. For the Eagles and the Lions, and we're now officially ticking down the time. C.J. Hall from the corner. And didn't have a huge scoring first half, but, uh, I mean, he got a respectable 10. Um, C.J. Uh, leads all scores with 24 a game, so just slightly under his average. Good sign to see him come out and hit the first two, which extends the Lions' lead to 16. It's 46-30. Woolridge with the baby hook. Orlando-esque. <laughs> yeah. And so you saw that you were able to study the stats. When you trust someone with your money, you're part. When you trust some, when you trust someone with your, when you trust someone with your money, you're part. We're back. Uh, had a little technical glitch there, um, and the Eagles hit a big three, cuts it down to 11. So. It was just a 16-point lead. Oh, but the big man, Cortland Blake, who has been on fire, he is shooting 58% from three-point land. Fun to watch. Gotten, <laughs> he is so good. And equally as good in the paint and outside. I mean, he's just a tremendous player. He was... Uh, a Sooner Athletic Conference Freshman Player of the Year. So he's got a lot of accolades to go. He's proved the point. Well, he is in the Sooner to make, make an impact. Last week, I believe he was 10 of 12 from three. Oh my goodness. And that's a big flush right on cue from Cortland Blake. He's got a quick five points in two possessions. That was a great feed from J.J. Bowling. Two really imp important parts of the game is, is the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half. Mm. If you can win the last five minutes and the first five minutes, I mean, that goes so so far in your, well, in that's, your that's attempt. That's ten minutes of back-to-back -back winning, uh, yes. if doing the math right there. Um, well, coming out of a locker room, is uh, very tough. I don't know if people process it that way, but you you stop playing for 15 minutes basically, and uh, it's a it's a flow disruptor uh, for both teams, and yeah. it's hard to just come right back out and have the intensity um, that you left with. It's funny you say that because that's true, and we were not very good at it. And you know, this year we started actually simulating it in practice. Oh wow! And so we practice. get a little break in yeah. practice, and then come come back out. And and we tell them, hey, we're we're this is halftime. We're coming out. It's the third quarter now. Well, I although you guys played really good in both first and second quarter, uh, more defensively than offensively. But in the third quarter, you guys did dominate. So you came out really strong. Offense is fun, and, and we love it, but we really do take pride in our defense. Last week, when I, last I checked, we were 25 in the nation in defense. Oh, wow. Uh, is that a, a, a base on points? It was based like, on whole, synergy whole overall. Like, okay, so there's a formula. Yeah, they combine a bunch of things. Got you. And synergy is a, is a uh, stats algorithm and, and compilation company. So that, that I'd like to see that uh, algorithm actually. Um, that's a highly. I'm an analytics guy, so I love the numbers. Corlin Blake just a little bit off, wide open from the corner, and teams are not quite in the fast pace zone that they were in the first half. And here comes a two-on-one. 
Nice. And that's what great point guards do. They know how to manipulate the defense. And Alaric Hall perfectly executed that. I don't know if we get the uh, replay on that, but he takes that all the way in and leaves his feet. So you got to commit as a defender. Now, we caught, caught the tail end of that, but if you can roll that back just a little bit. You saw where he had the ball coast to coast and then leaves his feet. Watch, he leaves his feet. When he does, the, the, the defender has to go for it, which now the trailer is wide open. So, so smart. It is. That, that's what we call high basketball IQ right there. And, and uh, Alaric Hall has come along as a great player. He's a junior this year and just playing at a phenomenal level. I mean, he's an athlete of athletes. I, no one can beat him in foot speed. There, there's, I, there's a couple quick guys in the single. Um, so it, it would be a race, but I think Alaric's got him on in a, so. in a foot race. Um, so quick timeout taken by Coach Woolridge and uh, the Eagles. Uh, it's getting a little away. But they actually had, uh, Sagu had a 16-point lead earlier, and they cut it down to nine quickly. And uh, so they, they just need to stop the momentum and create their own right here. You see C.J. Hall with 13 points, Blake with 14, and Yonker with nine. Noah Yonker having a spectacular end of first half. Here come the Eagles. Got to get something going right now. Big possession. Going down to Woolridge. He gets it out to the corner. That is short. And that is Chapman, who was red hot early in the first half and then has significantly cooled off. Blake just knows where to be, Coach. Great ball movement. Always knows where to be. Now, and that, that's kind of the secret to his success is, and they're going to call that a, a it's not a charge technically, it's a um, player control foul. Because he got rid of it and he was in passing motion and just trying to get it out. But um, I, I think that could have been left uncalled. Yeah, I mean, you need to. They need to be allowed to, to land. land. Yep. And usually, I, that may have looked off because he kind of did jump forward. But uh, nonetheless, it was a foul. Quick pace. Chapman. Oh, that is very nice. Hard to do at full speed. Stop immediately. Jump shot. That was nothing but net. And J.J. Bowling didn't sense the defense behind him. Kind of lazy pass out to it, which was going to be to his brother Noah there. So we do have both sets of brothers on the floor playing with Cortland Blake as the five. And early in the season we saw this, uh, Cortland wasn't uh, – uh, in rotation back then, so it was uh, C.J. Kelly. Now Blake's back in. Okay, we got Yonker coming in and Noah Bowling going out, but still a set of Bowlings on the floor, which is Cousins now. J.J. Bowling and Trace Bowling. And Trace Bowling can hit it from long range. He's very accurate. He's got great court vision as well. He really does. The bowling family just has a natural understanding of how to play high competition, whatever it is. They just do well, they excel. Oh, that's an off the ball player control. I don't know if we'll get to see it here. He was trying to slip it. Oh yeah. Uh, Maybe use the old ghost screen, but. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. He, he, was, he was actually not setting anything. He was slipping. And referee thought he was trying to set a moving pick. 
I really don't think that was the case. Oh, Noah! Yonker! Playing big time. Woolridge down there sees Yonker. He's had some success against Yonker. And he gets it up. And that, I think that's going to go on Trace Bowling, actually. Yep. And uh, from behind, there it is. So good defense uh, fronting up from Noah Yonker. And Bowling just got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. They, they run, SCU runs good stuff. They, they really do. They get good looks. It's just not going. The, the ball is not bouncing their way at all this year. They're, they're too good of a team to be 0-12. Kind of hard to, to imagine. But um, I mean, the sooner is tough. Yes. And you got to be on your game every night. So oh, they're going to get uh, Woolridge with that. I actually thought they. Yeah. Uh, Noah Yonker's playing so smart. Wow. Really got his player under the net. Created the room. So it was. Really no choice for that defender to, to either just let him have it or if you're going to play defense, you're going to foul him. Patterson trying to make some things happen. And with the Euro step, but there, Yonker really played that extremely well. And Patterson created the contact. I think we could live without a call there either. So Braylon Patterson gets his first free throw. It's been a pretty clean game. Okay, speaking of clean games, well, I want to reflect back on, on you. When you go into halftime, there was only three fouls called in the whole half. No fouls in the first quarter. Uh, do you like that? I do like it. They're, <laughs> they're letting us play. They did. But, you know, they're well coached, and, and they were running good stuff. and Really were. Yeah, both teams played good defense. But I do like the fact that um, – those that, those refs really let you guys play, and uh, didn't get quick whistle uh, at all in in the game. Maybe tightened it up just a hair in the in the third and fourth quarter, but you know it was not. It was just a difference from first to second quarter, but not. It wasn't bad. It wasn't like bad calls or anything. Right. So that had to be fun. That game was going very fast until the alarm sounded. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm asleep tonight and hear that alarm. <laughs> yeah, you really did. You get you get kind of used to it. After a while, it's worse in the locker rooms. So. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, coach, you're you're seven and four. You're tied for fourth place in the conference, and I mean that's. Kind of the aim, um, the, the the big picture aim is you, you want to kind of lock into one of those top four spots. So when it comes to conference tournament time, the first round gets played at the one of the, you you host it if you're a top four team, and uh, I it probably would be first in in well definitely your history here, but uh, in um, the last two decades. So, um, how, how you feeling about that? I'm just proud of the girls. It's it's good to see them see some fruit from their labor. 
Uh, there's a lot of basketball left. Who knows? Our you, conference is loaded, so it is. Um, oh no, there's lots. But I, I mean, is this is this a tool that you can use to, you know, set the the big goal? Or not? Not all teams uh, work equally. Like, oh well, we set the big goal and we shoot for that and we go for that. Because sometimes that can be a bigger distraction than not. Sometimes it's just better, especially when you have youth. Just take it one game at a time right. and and say we don't really care where we end up let's just end up in the playoffs and then and then try to do something but then you you get a little more audacious as you win more and you, sure and then it gets tight and you go okay well maybe we need to aim at that top four where, where are you in that process we're, we're more of the one game at a time okay we actually will take it down to one possession at a time I like and, it and we, we we have a philosophy we want to anytime we score it's everybody's mindset to follow that score with a stop. Mm. And so that's how specific we get. Yeah. Uh, as far as, like, season goals, we, we don't talk a lot about it because we just want to give the effort that can put us in a conversation. Yeah. And well, we're... that is working, by the way, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, they, the, the young ladies are really responding well. Um, to the approach, whatever that approach is, and uh, I and I told Amelia, it just seems like they trust each other on the court. Do you, do you feel like that's a true statement? Yes, good group of girls. They love each other, and they're a lot of fun to coach. They make me look good. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I I get that, and. Uh, it, I think it's a little more than them just making you look good. Um, they're they're executing, so that does make you look good when when players execute. And th there's a lot to that simple statement there to execute. So, um, and it it starts with believing. And I th that that is one of those I think really underrated. And you hear athletes and coaches and press conference. They say that, and it just seems so generic, and and you don't know if it's really genuine. Oh, that's just what coaches say. That's just what – it's a sports talk, right? But I, I could just tell you that if it doesn't start with belief, you won't – there's not going to be anything to believe in. That is at, correct. At the end. 100%. And you got to stand for something, and you got to believe in it. <laughs> and um, – I, I just really haven't seen a Lady Lions team believe like this. And, the, and, the, and when I compare it to a national perspective, the teams that are at the top, this is what we see in them. The common uh, trait or characteristic is the belief mechanism. Dylan Pitt trying to get on fire, and he's a really good outside shooter. He's missed his last three. Oh, nice. Oh, that should be goaltending. Yep, it is. That was a great action. It was. Although, I'm going to say, Noah Yonker got bailed out on that because he missed that shot. Yeah. He missed that shot. And it was just a mistake uh, from, I believe it was Ronald Moore that jumped up there and got his finger caught on the rim, which. Uh, uh, so Yonker's got 23 points. That's got to be a season high for him. I think, think it's, it's more like a career high. <laughs> Definitely season high. Is he a true freshman? Or is I, he a transfer? I think he's a transfer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he came from uh, the LSU system. I believe it was Shreveport. Which has had a really decent season this year. They had a big win this week over uh, Zula, um, Xavier of Louisiana which is down in New Orleans. New Orleans, as they say around here.
that was way off, but he got his own rebound off the backboard. And hey, impressive from Chapman, uh, uh, Sean Hopkins. Two foot left with both feet on the ground. Got the double hand stuff. Woo. When when you played, what what did you think of? A, at what point did you think, okay, this is a big lead, and or or hey, this isn't big enough. They can still come back. For, for never, me, it's like 15 points. Yes, yeah, that never happened. Uh, our coach, uh, you would never play if 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 he ever sensed that was your attitude. You weren't playing. So <laughs> I like you, it. You kind of learned. Um, you you never got burned. We never got burned uh, from letting a big lead go. And uh, it was it, talking about micromanaging a game. Uh, and I in my my last uh, couple years of collegiate uh, was at the same school. So. Um, uh, this coach uh, had a really good perspective that, that helped us as players see it. And it was possession micromanagement. So it's a 0-0 zero, zero ball game. Every possession you start offense. I like it. And, um, and we just learned to play that game no matter if you're up 30. I mean, it, 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 that's the coach's job. As a player, our mentality was we score and we, we keep people from scoring. Don't look at the scoreboard. And that is his job. We knew what everybody's role, the coach's role, was if you weren't in the game, you're, you know, um, it's just someone else's role on the floor to do whatever it is we do. And uh, I don't ever just really remember um, being in a game going, oh, wow, we're blowing someone out, even though we would – you look back at the history books and you got 40 point wins. Um, uh, there was one season where we had four 40 point wins. And I don't ever once remember reflecting in a game, okay, well, that uh, I knew that we were winning by 40. Well, in college, basketball is hard. It is. It's hard to win. So I don't believe any lead is really safe. No, and, and you just uh, talk to Coach Delton Dill about that because he's up 23 points in the second half with 10 minutes left and gets beat by Florida College, who's a really good team, by the way, um, uh, on a buzzer beater. But they were, they were in it able to hit the buzzer beater. Like, how do you lose a 23-point game? So if, if someone's answer was, oh, well, when you get 20, you should feel comfortable or, you know, you can do whatever. But I, I don't know. I, I just think if you got players on the floor that are have that on their mind, mm, maybe there's a little dysfunction somewhere else. Oh, that's a nice shot. Deep in the corner. So we've gotten from our really great research department, uh, they found out for sure this is a career high, collegiate career high for no Yaka. Nice play and some of uh, there's some players that don't get a lot of time um, in, in the regular season that are now on the floor. So mixed in. So just trying to work on and it's a good time to let guys that don't get a lot of playing time uh, to get some, some good minutes, um, good game time reaction. <laughs> Looks like uh, Trey McGrew's getting a little, little action here. That was a good shot by Owens a, a possession ago. Owens and I have something in common. We were both Angelo State Rams. Really? Yeah, uh, he's a transfer here from there. Oh, wow. I did not know that. I, and I did not know that on both accounts. I didn't know you You went to San Angelo. Yep, that's my place. Wow. Go Rams. 
I know a couple uh, other ballers from from San Angelo. Um, it's San Angelo State, right? A Angelo State. Angelo they, State. They dropped yeah. the sand part. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Coy Tipton, uh, Karina Tipton, uh, one of the great volleyball players. Her dad, Coy, uh, played at Angelo State. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, good, strong pedigree of athleticism. But uh, he told me that was a good program. That was just a really good program. Coach Ed Messbarger. Ooh. That's short from C.J. Hall. Now Corey Hicks gets in the game. Sends C.J. Hall to the bench. Yeah, that's uh, a little too much contact. From Colin Owens, the great Angelo State transfer. <laughs> He's a big guy. He is. He's really large. So where will this put uh, our men's team in the standings? Well, uh, next dead ball we'll get. Uh, you know, everybody's playing today, so it, the potential of. Uh, Teams jockeying around in placement because everything's kind of tight in the middle of the pack. But um, uh, obviously, this doesn't help. Oh. Our conference is kind of like an NFL game. The score doesn't mean anything until the fourth quarter in the NFL. And the standings probably don't mean much until yeah. the fourth quarter of the season. That's that, that, I, I like that. Yeah, that's that's pretty true because uh, there will be. I'm I confidently can say there will be um, in that fourth, fifth, sixth range. There will be some jockeying going on at the last game of the yes. season. Um, so we are in fourth place right now. Here we go. Uh, well, those are the games happening. Um, no finals yet, and there you can see we are tied for fourth place. Um, well, it looks like Wayland Baptist has finaled because they're at eight and three. So let's see. Um, if Mac U loses, which they're losing right now to UNT, and Science and Arts holds on, which they look like they're going to beat John Brown. Wow. So that's going to put them at eight and three. They'll be tied with Wayland Baptist for third place. So that means there is a fourth. We'll be, with the win today, we'll definitely be in fifth place. Um, will anybody be tagging along? I mean, that's up to Mac U uh, hosting um, or, or playing at UNTD right now. They're five minutes left, a couple points uh, down. And they just beat Sagu, <laughs> which uh, I think was a little unexpected. But like, like we were saying, the middle of the pack is you just don't know who's going to win. You just don't know. I mean, yeah. they got, that's why they got to play the game, right? However, this uh, this past Wednesday, the new poll came out, and it ranked Sagu at 25, which, uh, to be honest with you, i got to say I am surprised. Uh, that's a little overranked. Um, statistically, they, they haven't performed good enough to, to be that high, and uh, I think you got to earn it. They got, um, how much of that do you think? They have a really high prestige. Well, they should because uh, – Coach Dill carries a lot of of weight. They they I think a lot of times coaches get factored into that. And um, 
And that's Trey McGrew. Gets his first collegiate points. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a very interesting kind of. All right. First of all, that top 25 poll means absolutely nothing. Right. And as the NA High says uh, in, in, in print right above the ring, it says, this is for publicity purposes only, has no bearing or weight on how they seed. Right. So it means nothing, right? It's just a, it's a perception poll. It's just fun to have a number by your name. It is. So uh, Champion Sports Network has really come out with a, a ratings poll, and that measures um, performance. And uh, Sagu is in, in the 30s. Uh, I think their most recent poll has them 38 or something like that, which is probably a little more accurate. They're definitely in the top 50 of teams. But um, I don't know uh, exactly how you – because there's got to be a little more than stats. There's yeah. got to be kind of a, an idea of what can this team do when they do really well. Right. And that goes into how – probable are you to upset or get a win and uh, they they should have beat Mac U, according to the stats um, and they did it they took a 10 10 point loss um, and uh, and of course the the stats were kind of well Waylon should have beat Sagu at home but Sagu yeah. goes in there and gets a big win and uh, so it's real, it's, it's real interesting. As you get more bigger sample size, you start to see the layout. I will just say this. Um, I've looked at all the, all the analytics. So if you look at the NAIA on a home, there's a few teams at the top. And one of those teams at the top is in the Sooner Athletic Conference, and that's Langston. They're really good. And who's going to beat Langston in the Sooner? I, I know I'm not asking you to answer that question out loud <laughs> as rhetorical to you, but I am, as a sports fan, a basketball fan, a Sooner fan, as an AI fan, I'm just telling you, it doesn't look, there is very low probability that any team actually beats Langston in conference. So I predict that they go undefeated. Um, now, is Sagu capable? Yeah, they got to have their best game, and Langston's got to be a little less than best. Um, is John Brown capable? Yeah. They, they had a pretty close one with them. Um, is USAO? Uh, maybe. So there could be some upset potential in the postseason. But and John Brown still has to go to Langston. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, and that is a hard place to play. I mean, it's just the fan base there is wonderful, and they're very good on their court. But uh, after watching Grace play, which is the number one team in the nation, Langston's number two, there's quite the gap between Grace and Langston. And uh, no one beats Grace this year. No one. They, they, they maybe shouldn't have lost, but they were a little more vulnerable last year. They had that same team back, but this year they're so much better than last year's team. And uh, this is truly like a true top-tier D2, NCAA D2 team. So, so this, is your, this is your sock drawer prediction then? I, it's not a sock drawer prediction. I'm just telling you this is what no one's beating them. They're going to cut them down. You've heard it here first. Well, okay. Have you ever heard, you know, the uh, performance per 40? Yes. So, as it started out, as the NBA stat comes down to um, uh, to our ranks now. So, it's a it's a – a, a very, um, uh, I don't want to base everything on it, but it is a neat kind of perspective of what your players do if they played 40 minutes, right? And 40 minutes represents a game. They had 11 players in the top 100. Oh, of, wow. I, I, that, that, there's, I mean, come on. I, I mean, come on. 11 players? Wow. There's not 11 players on any team in America that get to play that can show up in a stat like that. They have 11 players in the top 100 of players. There's there's almost 1,500 players in the NAIA. I'm, wow. I'm sorry, 3,000 players. Yeah. 
that's just a that stat is just it's I don't think it'll ever be duplicated in the NAI. They have a a team that it doesn't matter who is on or off. Um Elijah Malone obviously and the coach Dylan I talked about it and and Elijah Malone should get the player of the year. Um Anthony Roy is a close second. Uh, for Langston, he is a phenomenal. You, you've gotten the same. Oh yeah, right? he's fun to watch. Yeah. So, um, uh, but Grace has maybe three Anthony Roy's on her team, and then they have a Elijah Malone. Wow. So I'm gonna have to go check them out. Oh no, yeah, uh, you got to see them on the road unless you buy their uh, stuff. They hide behind a paywall, but uh, they know they ca- kind of can because everybody wants to see them. And that atmosphere there is uh, electric. So it's kind of what everybody's shooting for right now, and uh, that that grace um, type of condition for basketball. Um, and their women's team is fantastic too. Uh, there you go. You get, you're getting all the finals. All the final scores are, are coming in. And uh, Mac U's got a little struggle going on. Um, they probably end out winning. That's my prediction. Um, Central, probably going to win. Um, Langston, definitely going to win. And uh, so, well... Yeah, it, so our producers are telling us four-way tie for second, but not really because um, science and arts and Wayland will be tied. Um, John Brown is uh, – is get. oh, okay, so I'm being told they did – uh, so if John Brown loses for sure, which, which uh, they no, they did, they did, and uh, so it's updated. I'm just running through all the scenarios, trying to make sure I'm not missing something. So it does. It um, Mac U will take four. So yeah, I mean, legitimately, uh, Sagu just beat Waylon at eight and three. So if there's a tiebreaker, you give it to Sagu right now. Um, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Wayland could drop to the fifth spot. Mackey really needs to win that game. Yeah, they're up now. Um, and then it'll be a fifth place tie. So, Sagu. Pokes its head in the top four. It looks like a three uh, a three-way tie, four-way tie for a second. But uh, you got it right now. You just kind of got to get this range. It's a top four understanding. So Langston sits alone, undefeated at the top, and now it's a battle for second, third, and fourth. Second, third, and fourth. So Sagu working hard to try to keep. That going, we are now officially halfway through the season. And it is time for part two of this round-robin-styled conference uh, playout. And now everyone gets to play each other again. And this is when it gets really good. So stay tuned to the Sagu Sports. No, I almost said sooner, but no. Sagu Sports Network uh, for all your... Your Sooner Athletic Conference information as well as, of course, Sagu Lions information. And uh, baseball is going to be starting up soon. You, man, Coach Matt has baseball on a roll. So you're going to want to really stay tuned to socials to find out how baseball is doing. Um, and, uh, of course, the Lady Lions are on a tear. Uh, they're... They're really aiming their guns at trying to break in that top four. They're almost there. Um, Track and field for Sagu is up and running. And even one of our camera ops who was on the football team, he's now in the throws competition. Hunter Griffin, we're proud of him. And uh, he's going to be participating in track and field events uh, this year. So a lot of big things happening on the campus of Southwestern Assembly's God University. 
in the athletic department, led by uh, Dr. Jesse Godin, Godin, who uh, just absolutely has this athletics program rolling. And it's a lot of fun to be uh, in the Lions Nation. So stay tuned to all the social portals, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, you can watch all the live action here on YouTube. I'm John Cookman, been your host tonight, and it's been an absolute pleasure, but I would be remiss to say all this gets done through uh, a great team of student workers and uh, some full-time staff and James Lex and Mindy Hodges and, and so many other people really do a lot of work to make this a great broadcast for you. So uh, we love them and we love that you keep watching. We'll see you next time. You've been watching the Sagu Sports Network.